you're listening to the Dynamic Women podcast. Each week, you'll be inspired by our global community of women. They'll share with you tools and stories to help you be dynamic in every area of life. Here's your host, award-winning coach and the CEO and founder of Dynamic Women, Diane Rolston. Hello, my lovely Dynamic Women. I'm Diane Rolston. I'm here on the Dynamic Women podcast. And are you freaking out because you need to homeschool your kids now or you need to at least figure out something that they are going to do? Well, I have Erin Holmes here who I have known for a little bit based on uh, what she does in her business. And I found out that she homeschooled and I was like, you need to talk to my people and tell us how you do this. So welcome, Erin having me it's great to be here yes it this is so timely thank you so much for jumping on today um and you know we are right in the midst of the coronavirus however this could be the case for anyone who wants to um go rving with their kids who wants to go traveling around europe who wants to take a year off who is needing to maybe move provinces for a short while, maybe to take care of a a sick family member and bring their kids with them. So there's so many ways why homeschooling is good. But first of all, Erin, you also run your own business. So tell us about you, who you are and what you do. Um, Well, I am, and actually how I met you was through podcast management. So I, I work with Amplify You and I edit people's podcasts and put them out online for them every week. On top of that, I have my own side business where I edit videos. So if somebody does a webinar, I'll take it and cut it into pieces. And then I put it up with captions um, and create this little piece that they can put on IGTV, Facebook, YouTube, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And um, when I'm not doing those online um, pieces with people, so social media or blogging, um, I'm actually, you'll find me decorating cakes and designing t-shirts. I do a lot of the designer cake stuff. So the things that you see on um, cake competitions on TV, I design those kinds of cakes for people and, um, and then design t-shirts and things. So pretty much anything artistic is uh, what I'm happy doing. I love it. And so I didn't know about those other things. So with the t-shirts and stuff, I'd love to, uh, to make sure that we pop that in our show notes about how to check out your t-shirts because now I'm really curious about that as well. Um, And just for anyone who's listening and maybe on the move, um, what's your, do you have an Etsy store or how do you sell your t-shirts? I have mostly been selling them through my Facebook page. I have a Facebook page and sell them that way or just by uh, word of mouth. I've tried a little bit of the Etsy, um, but I found that I had better luck with just people that I know and passing it on. Um, people would buy from me and then show it. The kind of the deal was I uh, people I know give them a little bit of a better deal and then they post the image and kind of give me a promotion as well. So it's kind of helpful. Perfect. Yeah. And so what's your Facebook page that you sell them on? Um, it is called Smiley Bears Creativity from Edible to Wearable. Oh, and that's where the cakes are too then. That's correct. Oh, okay. <laughs> One stop shop for both. Nice. Right. <laughs> Eat a cake, wear a new shirt. Sounds good. <laughs> Okay, so um, as I mentioned to you before, I have absolutely zero desire to homeschool. I am one of those parents that is um, very happy to send my kids off to school and do my own thing in my business. Um, But you homeschool and run a business. So what made you want to homeschool in the beginning? Um, Actually, how it started, first it started with me, actually. I was a homeschooler um, from grade 7 through to grade 12. So I um, was home, I had three sisters and all of us were homeschooled and I was the only one who actually had gone to school. So I I finished through Mm -hmm. at home. And then when I had my son, I had him at 21 and I actually sent him to school initially. He went to school the first few years up to grade six himself. And upon the year of grade six, there was this transition of moving from um, elementary school into middle school. And um, he was a little bit stressed and concerned. And so he actually had asked to be homeschooled. Oh, wow. Yes. I think this is the transition from going from elementary to middle was just a little overwhelming. And um, so initially I'd said no, because I didn't want him to choose homeschooling because he was afraid of the next step in his life. So Mm -hmm. I'd initially said no. And I put, we went to the school, we did all the steps to get him comfortable with it. And then his sister was born that year. 
and um, he got comfortable. He was okay with going to school. And in the, uh, the August before he was supposed to return for grade six, um, I actually decided that, you know what, maybe since I'm going to be home, let's give this a try. And, wow. um, and so we started that year. So I had a brand new baby and a son in grade six playing hockey full time. So it was, it was a lot, but we managed. <laughs> wow. And, and, and this is maybe a side question and maybe something uh, that some of the, the listeners are wondering is, um, how do you not kill your children being with them all the time? I don't know. Maybe I need help in my patients or something, but h- how do you just manage being with them all the time and being, it's a new set of rules. It's there's school rules and then there's home rules and there's like activity rules. How do you manage that? Um, for me, well, one thing about me that I'm always told by a lot of people is I have more patience than the average person. So that probably helps for sure. Mm. Um, and it doesn't mean just because I have him with me all the time or had them with me all the time that every day was perfect. There were some days where it was like, you know what, mom needs a break. You guys need to go and find something to do. So I do have those moments. Absolutely. But I've also been the kind of parent always when my kids, um, well, when he was in school, that the first day of school would come and I'd be in tears sending him to school because Mm -hmm. I just enjoyed having him around. So I really enjoy my time with kids. I'm really a big kid at heart. So just having them to do that, those kinds of things with, um, I think it also helps that I'm a creative personality. So we do a lot of the creative side of things. So sewing and, you know, crafting of any sorts, writing stories, Mm -hmm. acting them out, filming, we do a lot of that kind of thing. So, um, I think that also helps because I'm sort of along the same wavelength as a kid in that way. Yeah. Well, I even have a background in teaching and I'm like, I haven't had enough. But what this has actually brought up a whole nother reason why you'd want to homeschool, as you were saying, you know, just the way our kids are as people to maybe it is more of a, a mental health or uh like they have extra needs that it's just better to be at home or this is really good if there's a kid like they're just being bullied or they're they're you know there's so many other other ways now that this could be a really good option so is your daughter homeschooled as well she is she's in grade six this year and she's never been to school she's been right from the beginning and the nice thing with her is because as she was growing i was obviously homeschooling my son who was he's 11 years older than her and um she would take part in the learning. So we, she did a lot of, especially science learning. We did a lot of science experiments and things. So she had things from, (laughs) I'll tell you a funny story. When she started kindergarten, um, she goes once a week to a one day a week class. So it's a community class and it's with an actual teacher who a lot of them, they teach actually in the, in the regular school system Yeah. and they work with the kids on Fridays. And so they're divided into their own age groups and she was in kindergarten and they were learning certain things. And because she'd done so much learning in science with me, with Lyndon, my son, um, she actually came home from school and said, could I please go to a different class? Because I already know everything they're teaching. <laughs> wow. yes. yes. Like she just, because she'd already learned so much in the ages, like, you know, three, four, five years old, by the time she hit kindergarten, she felt she'd already done it, but it's just because we'd done it with her brother. So there is advantages that way when it comes to homeschooling. When you have older kids, the younger kids are learning at the same time. Um, it doesn't mean you have to adjust the older kids' lessons at all because they're capable of getting right in there and getting their hands on and they absorb a lot, apparently, according to her. <laughs> wow. So your your daughter's in grade six now. So how long have you been homeschooling then? It would be a total of 13 years. Wow. So this is not just a let's do it for a couple of years thing. Like you're in this. Yeah, it's been, yeah, it's been 13 years because literally as she was going into school, he was graduating. So I was, I had somebody in kindergarten and somebody in grade 12 the same year. (laughs) Wow. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So that was an adjustment. I'm impressed. Very (laughs) impressed. And we're going to get to that place of you also work and you homeschool. So we're going to get to that place. But first I want to hear like, um, tell me all the bad things about it really confirm that. And then I'm going to let you tell you all the advantages to it. So what are the disadvantages? What are the, the things that really, cause if, if not, if 
many people are going to be doing this moving forward. The listeners are going to be doing this. So I want to hear about what are the hard parts? What are the disadvantages so that they can brace themselves for that and plan for that? Right. Um, I, the hard part for sure, one of them would be uh, expect that your kids are sometimes going to argue with you when you want them to sit down, especially if they're not used to this. So they see you as the mom or the dad role and that's it. They don't see you as the teacher. So I'm not going to write for you or I'm not, you know, I have those days with my kids and, you know, and they were used to homeschooling. Right. So definitely those days um, will happen. Another thing can be just um, sometimes just the, the conflict that comes within families. Right. So then if something happens already and then you're frustrated, it's hard to sit down sometimes and teach them in those moments. Mm. And what I would say to parents at that time, and I, I usually say this to people who are just coming into homeschooling full time, is let those days go. If you want to sit and read books in your pajamas all day, there's <laughs> another day that you can still pick up math. There's another day that you could okay. still pick up writing, right? Don't, yeah. don't be so hard on yourself. I mean, I'll tell you for us homeschooling, we take off um, for, what is it? It's September, December spring break in two. We take off five months of the year for a break. So when you guys have two weeks for spring break, we take the whole month. At Christmas, oh. we do the same thing. And we still manage to get all the work done for the whole year. We're following the same curriculum and program that you are in school. Um, we have fresh grade like a lot of the schools do. So we're following the same things. Um, so yeah, so that would be my biggest thing is that when you have those days where it's hard or your kids are just not into it or they're more argumentative, definitely just let it go. Just take a breath and let it go. There's always another day to learn something new. And um, I mean, outside of that, I'm really the wrong person to ask about what's bad because I just love it so much. Yeah, but... well, I'm going to let you get to that, but I wanted to like pull that out. Like when you started and we're going to get to it, like the resources, but how did you even start? Because it can be overwhelming um, and you know, we're going to put in the show notes, some resources that you are going to suggest. You're going to give me some links to that, but how do I even go about, like, I'd think Googling homeschool grade three, homeschool kindergarten, like what, what, what does someone do? What's the journey that you would go on? Maybe like, what are the first few steps that someone would want to do? And especially we're part of the way through the year right now. That's the thing. So I would suggest that you go on to your province's um, government site for schooling and type in exactly what you said. You're looking for the grades. You're looking for what's required in those grades. I'm not sure how fresh grade works for schools, but I know with ours, when we go into each subject, we can click the little box that says more and it gives you a breakdown for exactly what's needed to be learned. And then suggestions actually even for how you could go about learning those things oh. um, so i'm not sure if the school's fresh grades have that but i know that ours as a homeschooler has that um, and that's where we go in and we submit all our work so that's one way that you can look at it i can also share with you um, something um, a breakdown for the different grades that i can find um if you like for for your listeners to wow that's to awesome to out. yeah but you, these are the government sites do yeah fresh grade does your children's school use that i have no idea new to me yeah because a lot of schools have uh, taken that on where it's basically you're just um it's broken down into each subject and then each subject what it is that you need to learn and then that's where we submit what we're doing for work um, into each of those sections and then the teacher can take it from there for report cards oh yeah. Cool. There's not some like end of the year test. It's, it's going through all of the, to prove that they know it. Yeah. Like we, wow. we do, yeah, we submit stuff all year long. So we have, you know, the same terms, three terms, and then we submit stuff each term. And then at the end of every term, we get the same report card, just the same as we would if she was in school. Wow. Okay. So now I'm really going off my questions and now I'm asking my personal questions. That's okay. So, uh, it's like you're the teach. well, you are the teacher, but you know what I mean? Like, it's like you've stepped into the profession of teaching, but you're not paid for it. Does the government give you a break in your taxes because you're not using the school system? Um, through the school, they give us, um, it's $600 now for the year. And then we can use that towards buying curriculum or um, if they wanted to do, uh, say, like something at the rec center, like swimming lessons or piano lessons, dra um, drama lessons, anything like that, you can put that money towards, um, towards whatever activities it is your mm -hmm. child would like to do. So I find that we usually use a good portion of it just to buy curriculum 
um, or you know things like that and then I just have a stockpile of it here and we go through and we don't necessarily go through every single page of every textbook or yeah. that we buy but it's nice to have the variety because again for some of those days when it's like I don't want to do it this way you could pull from something else right that will still keep their attention and just to give some context that's six hundred dollars for BC residents yes yeah so if you're in the states you got to check out what's happening in your state uh, and in, in different provinces across Canada and if you're in another country you're gonna have to figure out what works for you as well <laughs> okay cool so okay take us through all the benefits so I would say um, the biggest benefit for me is just spending time I just love to be be with them um, and the benefit to them is especially with having a home-based business I'm able to teach her things that still apply to her schoolwork, but actually apply to real life. So mm -hmm. take, for instance, my podcast editing. Um, I've actually sat her down and she knows how to edit a podcast. Um, she knows how to uh, create the content cards that go out on Instagram or for you know social media promotions. So I really try to incorporate real life lessons into her schoolwork. And then, um, so definitely that's the benefit. The other benefit is, is the one-to-one -one learning. First of all, they can learn things oh, yeah. in half the time. Um, the uh, percentage for kids that come out of homeschooling and go on to college and university is fairly high um, for being, uh, I don't want to say better students, but, you know, good students because they're used to learning on their own. They're used to having to just, you know, take control of their learning. So they tend to do uh, mm. well when they go on to college and university. Yeah. Um, the other benefit is, is when you've got more than one child, like I haven't had that experience in the sense that my kids were further apart, so they didn't have this. But if you've got kids that are closer together, they're learning together. So when you're teaching the older, the younger are learning, right? Yeah. So you're doing that. Um, and then they're also, um, for some of the older kids, when they're learning things, they can turn around and try to teach it to the younger kids. And it also solidifies it more in their, in their head, right? Um, the last thing that I would say that's a real big benefit is also if a child is really interested in something when they're homeschooled in the school system, you have to just go with the flow, right? This is the plan and this is the order we're doing it in. And even if kids really like it, I'm sorry, we're done with this. Now we have to move on to something else. Whereas here at home, if my daughter really loves something, we'll spend more time on that. Um, and we can just sort of like, okay, you already understand the show that you know it by whether it's in a video, doing a, a worksheet, whatever it is, let's show you know this and we can move on to the things that you really love and spend more time. So if it's her science, if she loves science or writing stories, we can mm -hmm. just spend a little more time on that because it's only her. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. It definitely opens up the doors and, and also the ways you can learn. So if your child is more tactile, then you can mm -hmm. find ways that they can learn where they're moving or using items um, to do their learning rather than just sitting and writing on paper. Most kids don't enjoy sitting writing page after page after page, right? So yeah. you can adjust your learning style. And special projects even. Uh, when I went to that conference that, um, you know, Michelle and I went to the New Media Summit, there was a girl there who was 10 who has her own podcast. Oh, okay, yeah. Yep. Her mom and dad both have podcasts. Nice. So I was thinking that'd be such a cool thing for my daughter to do. Um, and so in this way, this, that could be a project to be able yeah. to do that. Yeah, because you can teach them things. This year, what I'm working on with my daughter is she has a, an idea for a card, card business, card making company. Oh, cool. um, she makes some fantastic cards. And so a lot of people have told her you should make these and sell them. And so she has been doing a lot of research on creating a business plan. So she started with her name and what does it take? How much her material is going to cost? So, and you can use that for a few different subjects in school, right? And, yeah. and, um, and she's learning something that's practical, whether she ever goes and does the business, she's learned how to create a business plan. So if she ever had to go and get a loan for a business or whatever it is, she's learning all of those yeah. steps. Yeah. And that's what I hear a lot of people complain about is not learning entrepreneurship in school and not learning how to manage finances in school as well. And that would teach both plus um, envisioning a different pathway. And it's not, I'm not saying the school um, curriculum that we have or the teachers are bad in any way. Oh, it's enough. just, it's a piece that's missing. Um, mm -hmm. And so that you'd be able to, to really cater to whatever their desires are and then to add in whatever extra things you think that they need to learn. Exactly. Yeah. And it allows for just learning to be fun, which is what it's supposed to be, right? 
Mm -hmm. I think homeschooling kind of opens that door for kids is because if you can teach them in a variety of different, we never learn the same way every day here in our house. Um, so if you can teach a variety of different ways, kids are going to be more excited. Plus they're more inclined then to go and learn on their own, do their own research on things. Right. Um, yeah, yeah it, it opens that up for them. So you're almost preparing them for the workforce as well. Because yeah. <laughs> yes. yeah. you're like the boss <laughs> and they're working. <laughs> That's right. Yes. We That's have those good. conversations a lot when she says things, I don't want to do this today. And I'm like, well, <laughs> we all have days we don't want to do it. <laughs> we have yeah. to still do it. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. So I'm seeing the benefits. You're pulling me over a little bit. But then my mind goes to, and not even thinking about what your life is like, but my mind goes to the place of, yeah, well, this is all good for the parents that are stay at home without a business. However, you have a business. Mm -hmm. So how do you get your work done, but also make sure that both of your kids or whoever you're teaching at the time mm -hmm. also has your attention? How do you manage that? Um, getting up early. I find is a really good way to do What's it. Early? Um, I usually get up around 10 to six and mm -hmm. I see the boys off to work and then I'm sit down and I spend, you know, three, three hours or so working um, just on my stuff because it's quiet at that time. Mm -hmm. um, there are some days when she has to do something on her own because I have extra work to do and extra projects come in, something last minute's changed, a client needs something. And so she's understanding of that. Um, she's old enough. She's not, I mean, some people are having kids that are home that are, you know, in kindergarten. So it's a little bit different um, in that way, but definitely um, early or late at night, I find is the best for me um, mm -hmm. because otherwise, yes, otherwise they need your attention. And the whole point for me of being home and working from home is so that I can spend the time with her. Okay. So it's not, yeah. it doesn't really work if you're trying to work at the same time. <laughs> No, it doesn't. And I've tried to experience that before and it's horrible. And I'm, so I'm imagining that when I need to be supporting them, if this kind of continues on, and I'm sure those out there who are listening to this are thinking, oh my gosh, how am I going to be able to manage this? Because I also have to work either in my business or even work a nine to five sort of idea. So how does your day happen? So you said about six, you start working, you work until about nine. Is that when class starts? Um, no, we usually get up and have uh, our, our breakfast. Um, sometimes during breakfast, what I do actually is read to her, um, read a couple chapters of a book that we're working our way through. Um, or we listen to podcasts together. We listen to a lot of adventure style podcasts. Ah. So, so sometimes we'll do that as well. Um, our mornings are pretty, you know, pretty relaxed. Uh, I will say right off the bat, I am probably the most relaxed homeschooler, but I've been doing it for a long time. So I don't, I'm, we don't have a like, let's sit down and, you know, you have to do this at this time. Um, and usually I make a point of then moving on to math, usually first thing. And, and I just do that simply because that's a subject that's a little bit harder sometimes for kids mm. concentration. So if we do it first thing in the morning when we're a little more awake a little and more not so frustrated, yeah. It's that's a, a good tip. Different. Yeah, it's a good tip. Yeah. So start with the subject that your child struggles with the most. Yes. or you perceive to be the, the most difficult and not even just in general, but probably for even that, that day, there might be a lesson in science that's harder and make that the start of the day. Yes. Because yeah. for both, for both of you, right? Because you're fresher, you've got more patience first thing than three o'clock in the afternoon, probably not so much. Right? So. <laughs> okay. And then, so you do the math or the hard subject first, and then you do another subject or you roll into something else. Uh, usually we will do then, um, sometimes we'll do either sci I, science, I sprinkle throughout the week, but then it's usually math and some sort of English writing, story writing, that kind of thing. And with, when it comes to that, with uh, English and writing, we, I've done courses through um, Skillshare, uh, courses through Udemy, sometimes things on YouTube, uh, different things that I've found. Um, so we usually work our way through a bit of a course, maybe a section of it, and then sit down and actually do then the work part of it that they've that they've um, asked right. us to do. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then lunch, is there yeah. recess? Do you? Um, sometimes we'll do things like going out for a walk where she runs around in the backyard or something like that. Um, where we live in uh, White Rock, there's just a park down on our street. So sometimes we'll run down there and you know just get some fresh air or walk to the store. 
you know, do some stretches, something like that keeps you going. Um, and then after that, I usually don't do a lot in the afternoon when it comes to school, just because I find, like I said, you know, brains are just not, they're just not there. And it's not, to me, it's not worth the frustration or the aggravation yeah. to, fight, to fight over it. If we are going to do something, it'll be something more creative. Like if we're writing a story, like this week, actually, we have plans to record um, a video series that we've come up with. So um, mm. then we'll, we'll do things like that more of the creative fun stuff where she's still learning, but it's, she doesn't realize she's learning. <laughs> yeah. And so what, what time does your typical day end? Um, I would say it depends, but sometimes we finish by lunch and we're done and that's it. And we don't touch anything mm. for the afternoon. And other times I would say somewhere between one and two. in the Okay. Afternoon. So it's maybe about four, four or five hours max in, in work in a day and even then it's not even we're not sitting working that entire yeah. time yeah I mean I think if people came and really took a look at at uh, at us they think wow you're not really you're not so you know, like when they picture kids sitting in a desk just like working really hard and that's not what it is it's very relaxed most of the time we're in pajamas sitting on the couch so <laughs> that's awesome if your daughter was the same age as my daughter I would totally be asking you to zoom her in and teach her as well <laughs> I've offered that to people actually before when they've uh, had different situations that have come up and uh, I've said, yeah, you can send them my way. I'll gladly teach them because I enjoy it. It's a lot of fun. Is that a new, a new business for you is, is homeschooling through zoom while this is happening? You never know. It's a very possible idea. I've been thinking about stuff like that since this all happened and people have just been freaking out online. So we'll see, we'll see what it turns into. <laughs> yeah. Or even like a homeschooling coach to support the parents as to how they, you know, can get through all this. Uh, yeah. Not that I'm saying you need to do any of this, but just my brain is always turning around, around this kind of stuff. So, okay. So I know the disadvantages and advantages. You're painting a picture of what a day is like. Um, let's kind of wrap this up with any, any, well, actually resources. We'll just kind of get a list. Yes. Uh, but is there any that you want to speak to right now or any tips that you have for people having success in doing homeschooling as like a thing, like I'm committed, I'm going to do this for the rest of my kids' school time, or even just I'm going to do this while we need to do it? Well, so I would say for right now, one thing I was thinking of um, that we used to do when I was um, younger and homeschooled is my mom had actually set up a system where we could earn time to play video games or to oh, wow. watch tv or to watch movies those kinds of things and it was just by like okay read depending on the age you know if you they were small read x number of books like small books or read x number of chapters in a book if they're older mm -hmm. um if you're wanting to do say like some of the courses that i was uh talking about you know your child could do so many minutes of a course and some work and then they would earn we earned tokens my mom used actually the bingo the bingo chip tokens. Oh. Um, yeah. So we earned those and each token was worth 15 minutes of TV or video games or things like that. So, yeah. <laughs> so I would say that that's a good way, especially now for kids that are not used to being home is give them a, a purpose, right? And then you're, you're getting them to actually do the work, but they're doing it with a goal in mind, right? I um, like the token idea because, you know, we've done the star chart or the check marks or whatever, but I love the idea of tokens. I'm totally breaking that in. Yeah, I think, I think it's a great idea. And I saw something actually on Facebook the other that someone had posted and it was um, having kids home and they had set up, I guess, like a little snack where they had the mini bags of chips and the different things in there. And then they had to <laughs> earn if they wanted so much and they had to trade in. And she was using Monopoly money, actually. So they had used it, do different things, and then they would earn so much money, and then that money could be traded in for buy the something. treats or, yeah, to buy yeah. something from the store. Yeah. Wow. It's kind of fun, I guess, now, especially when you can't take your kids out, especially in that spring break, and they were expecting to, you know, do all the spring break fun things, right? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Um, and then the other thing that I would say um, to encourage, or even kids who love to read, is having them read a book. Uh, the book and then if there's a movie to go with it they could um, mm -hmm. read the book this is what I've done with my daughter read the book watch the movie and then write a comparison paragraph um, to where you compare the two mm -hmm. a lot of a lot of local libraries will have um, book club style questions for books as well even for kids books so you could you know read the book and then answer these questions and then it's just you know 10 questions or whatever it is so it's yeah. not too difficult but 
it's just sort of adds something to it, solidifies what they've what they've learned, and and also shows that they comp they're comprehending what they've been reading. Um, if you have kids who don't like to um, write, which my daughter is one of those, she doesn't like to physically take a pen and write. Um, she loves to type on the computer, so you could do that. Or you could give them your phone or your iPad and they could record the answers to the questions. So you could ask them the questions. We do a lot of this, ask the question and then record them giving the answer. Mm -hmm. And so they're still showing that they know it, but you're not having to argue with them about writing it out. Yeah, especially if they've done a lot of writing that day, when really the, the objective is comprehension or creativity or something. And yeah, that's actually a good, really good reminder because even with the work that I do in, and then when I do curriculum development, um, providing those alternative uh, ways of processing or of completing is always nice, as long as the objectives are met. Right. The objective is not to write it. The objective is to show comprehension or creativity or whatever it may be. Yep. To understand. Exactly. Nice. So it's, it's, it works to do video. Um, especially if you have kids that don't like to write and there's plenty of them out there. So, <laughs> well, you like, I want you to be my teacher. Yeah. You're so, <laughs> you, uh, you sound so sweet in how you do this and, and like you'd be probably the kid's favorite teacher sort of thing, really chill and, and creative in how you develop things. So, um, we're going to add a lot of uh, any resources that you want to share with us around, um, you know, where to go and find the curriculum, maybe some cool sites, course places to buy, and even uh, resources to connect with other parents who are doing this, like you, like for real, like legit homeschooling their kids. And so anything you want to share would be fantastic to our listeners. Um, is there anything else that you want to share about homeschooling anything else before we wrap this up yeah no other than um just some fun activities uh something that i'm not sure a lot of people are aware of is um stop motion is fun for kids to do and there is actually an app and i will share that link with you but that's a lot of fun that's something my daughters really enjoy doing taking the little toys and creating stop motion videos so um, and that's something that can keep them busy for a long time because it takes a lot of pictures to make even one minute of video so they'll be okay, busy you're speaking my language here <laughs> <laughs> yeah um the other one is um scratch which is an online gaming creation so kids kind of learn a little bit about coding and they can create video games that wow. they can share with their friends so yeah there's lots of uh, a lot of things especially right now a lot of the companies even that we would normally have to pay memberships for are free right now they've opened up their doors to free so there's a lot of that kind of stuff out there yeah, so now's the time to just test it out and check it out and see what works. And who knows, come September or at the start of the new year or, or this new school year, whenever that happens for different people around the world, because I know it is in different times of the year, um, we might have some some more kids learning from home on purpose. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. <laughs> well, Aaron, I really appreciate you taking the time uh, to do this today. And I know I kind of sprung this on you today when I found out you homeschooled. I was like, oh my gosh, will you do this? And so I trust that uh, I, I got a lot out of it. Um, I feel you know more calm now. And I'm sure that's the same for a lot of the people listening in. And so um, uh, if people want to reach out to you, we've got your info also in the show notes there. Um, and so just thank you again for sharing your time, your expertise here, um, and your passion for homeschooling. Yes, you're welcome. Thank you, Dynamic Women, for joining us today. Please hop on over to iTunes to subscribe and leave us a review. Who do you know who needs to hear our message? We'd love it if you'd share our channel with your friends and family. If you're ready to be more dynamic, have more balance and more success, head over to www.dynamicwomenclub.com forward slash free gift for your key to success book. Stay dynamic.